All right, Tour Down Under is pretty soon, so I thought it's a good idea to crack out a preview video. Do men's tour of Tour Down Under first, then we'll go on to the women's. So the teams, basically all the World Tour teams are there, as is the law. UniSA, which is the Australian national team, and Israel. Um, kind of rogue, don't know why they're there, but anyway, pro quantity now, funny. Anyway, we'll go through the stages first, and then we'll kind of go, well, actually, no, we'll go through some of the riders. So, uh, guys, all the Australians are always good, so like Michael Matthews will be okay, Sam, uh, Sam Yates as well, Ben O'Connor looking good, uh, Stano, kind of like nothing, Bahrain, Pedal Bilbao is pretty interesting guy, he'll be all right, Phil Bauhaus for the sprints, uh, Tets Fatsion is going to be unreal and buzzing, it's kind of hilly, and he will go well, Kokar, he'll get some good results, again, it's kind of like hilly to terrain, Harrison Wood, GB boy, will be doing well. Uh, again, actually, Coffers just have quite a nice team. Quick step, James Knox probably go okay for GC. Uh, they got quite a lot of guys who can go okay for GC, to be honest, but no out and out sprinter. I like all of those guys can climb pretty well. Alperson, Kane Gross, sprinter, Rob Stanard for GC, pretty standard. Um, FDJ will probably be the same, and Michael Storr going for GC. Uh, they got a couple younger guys who are really good as well, like Paul Penho, uh, Ruben Thompson, Lawrence Pithy, they're all pretty decent. Ineos, G, Leo Hayes will probably go for GC would be my prediction, or Luke Platt, probably Luke Platt to be fair, and other guys just to help around, and uh, Ethan Hayter for the sprints. Intermarche, uh, Herbert Tyson uh, can sprint, so probably him. Uh, Boy Van Poppel, not, not too slow either. Dion Smith probably get, will go okay as well. Yumbo, no one really stands out too much. Maybe Ryan Dennis will go well for GC, uh, but the, you know the other guys maybe not so much. Mubastar, Always interesting. Oscar Rodriguez could do something. Even Romeo did really well last year under 23, so he, he might go okay as well. DSM, they got a lot of Aussie and New Zealand guys, so Chris Hamilton, probably their favourites. Everyone else just kind of, you know, cruise around. Jay Vine, obviously, will be motivated for a big result. Mark Hershey could do something and back Stewart maybe for some sprints. Arkea Samsic, kind of an, a nobody team. I don't expect too much, except maybe Eddie, Eddie Gesbert to have an okay result. And uh, yeah, similar got similar to sort of teams that Jay, Jay Hindley will go okay. Uh, and then Israel is sort of like meh. And Caleb Buen obviously is the sprint. Anyway, let's have a look at the stages. Kind of different this year. So first stage is um is just like a prologue. So again, like who's going to be going well? People like Rowan Dennis, so strong more. Maybe more track boys, like some of the Australian national team guys. Like Conor Leahy is pretty, pretty strong in that sort of discipline. Alberto Batiol as well. So maybe Mark Haller, like those kind of stronger guys. Ineos have a lot of people who could do well in it as well. Um, so yeah, that would be interesting. Brian Kokar is not too bad on those kind of efforts. And Michael Matthews, uh, he's strong as well. So, you know, there's quite a lot of people. The thing with Tour Down, Town, Tour Down Under, sorry, I can't get my words out. It's very hard to predict due to the fact uh, that uh, it's so early in the season, you know, how everyone's going. So this is the second stage. This is uh, Tanunda laps. Looks pretty decent, 4.5k, 3.7%. Again, hilly, but probably be a bunch sprint. So again, it kind of be those like Michael Matthews, Kokar, uh, people like them, Hater, who can get over the climbs, but also do okay in the sprints. Brighton to Victor Harbour, that is a pure sprint stage. Nettle Hill, I did have the come up there, actually. I don't know if I've got it anymore. I think I might not, but that is actually a decent bug, to be fair. So interesting to see how fast they go up there. Uh, but yeah, this is a beer sprint stage. So again, similar guys. There's no real pure, pure bunch sprinters here anyway. Maybe Caden Groves is the only one, but he's good at climbing as well. Anyway, those guys will be one to look out. But GC-wise, I can't predict too many differences except the prologue so far. Stage three is kind of interesting. They go up Ashton Hill, which is not super, super steep. Um, if I actually zoom in, it might be Norton Summit. No, it's not Norton Summit. Okay, I don't know. I don't think I've done that climb. Maybe I No, I don't think I have. Anyway... This, I thought, would be hillier than it is. Checkers Hill is, like, decently steep. Corkscrew is good as well. There'll be some GC action on that. 2.4k, 9%. Corkscrew is actually properly steep. Um, it's steep as, like, 15% for 500 meters, and then it kind of gets less steep over the top. But there will be a select group there for sure, definitely. Uh, people to go for, again, will be, like, Luke Platt, Maybe Tets Fatsion, I'm big on him. Ben O'Connor, Lucien Sanchez, probably he always goes okay. Again, like Michael Story, just the climbing boys, they'll all be there. They will be there or thereabouts. It's, it's enough to get a small gap, but it's hard to like kind of put minutes into people because it's just not that long. And then this this end, like final, so they're not doing uh, Willunga Hill anymore. Instead, they're doing um, a, a sort of closer loop to Adelaide. You can see like Adelaide is literally there. Um... Mount Lofty, like, it's not that hard, um, really, 1.5k, 7%, but it's, it's like, 
kind of deceptive because it is more uphill than you expect but i think this is going to be a bunch of sprint i think it'll be like a bunch of sprint between like you know a group of 20 or 30 maybe i, I just unless the team really takes it on i just i just can't see it um but yeah that's it so it's kind of a weird one i don't really know unless people are really aggressive i think it could be a bit of a snooze fest a lot of the stages and just end up in reduced bunch of sprints um the women's will kind of go through uh stages first again it, like not the most exciting Ganel to Aldinga, like pretty much bunch sprint. Again, they do the Mount Lofty 6k 3%, uh, which I th I th don't not sure. I'll have a look actually at the stage profile where they're coming from. And they got the corkscrew stage as well. So like decent, but nothing too crazy. If we kind of look at um stage two, we'll be able to see what which side they come from. But I think looking at where they come from, it, it's not looking like it, yeah, it's not that hard. It's really not very hard at all. So yeah not not great either for the women's kind of like decent um but yeah the women's teams it's kind of better because they actually got the do aussie domestic teams which is good uh nice to see someone shell mabik over 93 there as well um new zealand national team always good to see as well so if we're kind of looking at like who's going to be good obviously team jaco alula uh the big ones wrote uh ruby roseman granon has has had good results in crit so you know expect her to go well um Brady Chapman obviously Australian national champ so again one of those ones I think the people who would go well is kind of like Clara Coponi she did well in um in tour of Britain uh last year you know you'd expect her to go okay um and then like I don't know there's there's like it's kind of more just going to be a bunch of sprinters um Nicole Frayne she's okay as well Ali Wollaston she had some good results actually last year as well so I can maybe on some of the hilliest ages like corkscrew maybe but i don't really know i don't know how hard corkscrew will be like you'd expect it to be like a pure gc day uh like amanda sprout or something to really get a good result um but it's kind of hard to say altogether it just depends how hard it's written but the two days before i think will really be more for uh for sprinters more than anything else um so yeah that was be my prediction kind of i'm kind of disappointed i'm not gonna lie like but all the the women's and the men's is just a bit lame like they're just not very exciting stages they're not there's a lot of steep hard climbs in adelaide and they don't pick many of them they don't really do any summit finishes that are hard the only one that's decent in men's and women's which they both have is the going up corkscrew but again it's like it's hard but it's not really that hard at the end of the day and so it's just i don't know the thing is, if this was like in the middle of the season and kind of more important parades, people could cause fireworks. Because it's the beginning of the season, half the guys and girls here just don't really want to go that hard. They're kind of just like noodle around or whatever. So it's like they're still training. So yeah, not, not, I would not say it's great. And the, the prologue is interesting. Yeah, okay, it's fine. But like, how long even is it? Does it say? Actually, it doesn't say this. Does it? It's like 1.2k. Um, I, I don't really see it. Or is it 6k? Is it 6k? No, 5.5k, sorry. Yeah, it's just not great, is it? Like it's kind of just meh. So anyway, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really I'm not really convinced about either of the parkour. And also the women's could just be like a day longer. I don't really see why it's only three days, but anyway, a bit soft. But it is what it is. Anyway, hope you did enjoy this video. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.